Hello, and welcome to the Heat Software short video series. My name is Renee Gonzalez, and I'm joined by my colleague, Rob Kelsall. And today, we're going to talk about uh, how to manage USB and port control using our endpoint security solution. So Rob, when I'm talking to customers, um, typically a, a really easy and effective way of locking down an example of USB ports is using GPO policies. Um, but one of the restrictions with GPO policies is you can either turn it on for everybody or off for everybody. So can you tell me how our solution can handle that use case of maybe turning it on for just certain users who have a legitimate business reason to use a USB key? Absolutely, Rene. Um, you're correct. I mean, just a, an on-off policy isn't isn't going to be suitable for most most large organizations. So in the heat security platform, we're actually able to provide a granular policy. You can, you know, maybe you can have policies for removable media for a user or a group of users, but you can also go down to specific makes and models of device that you might want to allow. Um, very granular and mature product that we have here. Um, in this brief session, I think it's going to be important just to show the use case really around enabling the use of USB devices because at the end of the day these things are useful, there will be users that have a business need and we don't just want to block them, so how do we securely enable access? Can I base this access or permission based on Active Directory? Absolutely, fully integrated with Active Directory groups. So I'm just going to go ahead here in the product um, and go into manage and device control policies. Within here I can see all of the different policies that have been set for different types of devices. Much like our application control product, this is full whitelist based. So you define a policy of what's allowed, everything else is denied by default. I'm going to go down here to uh, removable storage devices. You can see I've got some policies here set already. Um, now. From a removable media point of view, most organizations may allow some level of read access. Um, but if you're going to copy data to a USB device, you're going to want to encrypt that. And we use FIPS 140-2 approved encryption, so a very secure method of securely enabling access to these devices. So I can turn it on for certain users and I can also restrict only read access or yeah, write access? That's right. So I'm just going to go ahead in this example, I'm going to create an initial policy so I go to create and device class policy. Um, I'm just going to accept the default name here and select removable media, removable storage devices. And I'm going to say I want to set some permissions. If I wanted to, I can audit files transferred to and from as well, either at the file name or full content. And I can even enforce copy limits. In this basic policy, I'm just going to go ahead and set some permissions. You'll see here we also have policy enforcement mode. We can do temporary and scheduled permission. I'm just going to make this a default always on policy. And I'm going to say if the device is connected, the user gets read access. And I'm going to say they get read access to unencrypted devices. You see here we've also got a file filters tab. Now, some customers might say you can copy any file to and from that device, but I don't want executables to be brought in or out. Or, on the flip side, I'm just going to whitelist these particular types of files to be allowed. I'm just going to leave that off for now. I'm just going to go ahead with a basic read-only policy to unencrypted media. And then the final step would be to assign that to an endpoint, endpoint group, or indeed, as you mentioned, active directory group could be put in here. So I'm just going to go ahead and just assign this real quick to, uh, let's go ahead and do everyone. And for the group, I'm going to go ahead here and just use this uh, data center one. And click finish. So that's my first policy. If an end user now connects a device, it's going to give them read-only access um, to the unencrypted device. I'm now going to team this up with a second policy that will allow access if the device is encrypted. And we're going to specify the type of encryption as Heat Software's built-in encryption. When the endpoint sees those two policies combined, it knows that it must encrypt 
that particular device for the user to get right access. And the user is going to be able to make a choice here. They can continue to use the device as read only, or they can accept and encrypt the device. And with our encryption, we also offer fully portable encryption. We'll put software on the device as well as encrypting existing data. So if the user does want to access that off the network, they can enter the passphrase to then gain access through the software installed on the device. So you could do this, uh, in this example I'm doing this for removable media in general, but as an organization you could maybe just pick a Lexar 2 gig pen, you could take those cheaper devices that are non-encrypted and actually turn them into secure fully FIPS 140-2 approved encrypted devices. So let's just go ahead and create the second policy, I'm going to go to create again and device class policy, I'm going to select removable media, and I'm going to select permissions, and click next, and we're now going to say we get read-write access, but this time using our self-contained encryption. Click Next, and again, assign that maybe to my data center one group. And just for this example, I'm just going to use everybody. Again, in a typical customer environment, we'd be selecting an Active Directory group here. And then on an ongoing basis, rather than creating policy for individual users, you set the policy once in heat, you manage your Active Directory group membership to then give users access to encrypted devices. So if I'm basing it off of Active Directory, <clears throat> the policy will always follow the end user no matter what PC they log into? Absolutely, and as you can see from the wizard there, the beauty of this software is that you can mix and match that if you want Rene to be able to access on just your laptop, you can do, or Rene on any laptop, the policy is going to follow you around. Great. And you talked about encryption, so does that mean that I can stop buying USB sticks that are hardware encrypted? Absolutely. I mean, if if you have existing hardware encrypted devices right now, add those to a whitelist, you can make them read-write, we won't interfere with that. If another type of device is connected, it will be denied by default. Going forward, you can just buy those cheaper devices and rely on heat software to, to provide that FIPS 140-2 approved encryption. Great. So that concludes today's session. Um, thank you for joining, and we look forward into joining our future sessions.